and you will be insane or if you are in sales that you don't want to automate low value tasks if you really want to enable your sales team i think you need to have more in-depth system that can support them without bringing more work to them uh, i think app switching between different tools is even faster than finding it in, in salesforce uh, but they just need to be integrated I think. welcome to the revenue discussion podcast this podcast aims to inspire and educate the newest generation of revenue leaders on various subjects related to sales, marketing, revenue operations, and customer success. Every week, we have an inspirational guest who is willing to share his or her insight, strategies, and tactics that has worked or are still working for him or her. Today, we invited Bram van der Velde to the show. Bram is the founder and CEO of Leadcamp. And if you don't know Leadcamp yet, it is basically the, the AI-driven sales copilot. It really changes the way we approach sales. Think of automation, think of guided selling, of intent-driven sequencing, and many other buzzwords that Bram will be unpacking in this episode. Enjoy. Good afternoon, Bram, and welcome to the Revenue Discussion Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me, Martin and <laughs> Willem. Thank you for being on the show. Um, Ram, you are uh, the founder and CEO of Leadcamp, you know, which is, uh, I mean, I, I know you know, but which is, you know, the platform to to get the focus and priority right as a sales on the one hand, but also on the other hand to save time as a sales rep. Is that kind of right? Yeah, All right. Correct. Correct. <laughs> so I think that's that's pretty interesting because you really do power uh, leverage the power of tech into you know the way that we approach sales and so i'm kind of interesting to learn more about you know how you guys you know try to reinvent the way we approach sales at lead camp but also you know what's your background where did you come from um and you know what leads you up to uh to the role and the mission that you have today can you maybe uh what leads me up (laughs) 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 where should i start Take it back a few years? Yeah, or? maybe if you can give just a little bit of background, you know, where where you started, uh, you know, who you kind of are in, in just a couple of sentences, but then also this it up to, you know, where you are today. Yep. Yeah, so basically Lead Camp started because of a pivot that we did. Um, initially, we had a product called Cardify, which was a tappable business card where we help sales reps on events uh collecting data from their prospects and when they got back to the hotel our vision was they have a list of about 100 people they met and they know exactly uh who they should reach back out to uh based on the engagement now uh, with covid all happening um events were no go so in the first few months we were like all right this will this will go over this will go away again um but we're still here i think events starting to come back um but uh yeah it's it's not the same it, it wasn't the same for a couple of years so um with that same vision of making sure that sales reps and account executives were talking to the right people every day and every hour um we pivoted to lead camp um and we helped them we helped them sell basically interesting so how was the time that you know you had to to pivot was it uh was it pretty obvious that you were going to pivot towards that direction or what was the, that that kind of journey there? Yeah, it was kind of, um, I, I still remember in the beginning of COVID, it, I think it was back in 2019, 20, 2020, uh, yeah. I had a meeting planned with PJ from Showpad and he said like, um, yeah, the meeting is in a couple of months, uh, we're going to do it virtually. I was like, wow, virtually, why would we do that virtually? This is just a fever type thing. This will go over. Um, And (laughs) it was more or less in the same way that the pivot happened because I didn't, we started to build stuff and we were just going with that flow of the pandemic and then meetings started to go more virtually and then sales interactions were going more virtually. Um, And so we started to develop more things that could, um, yeah, that could help with that. Uh, and it was at a certain point that one of the investors said, um, yeah, your name is confusing. Uh, you should either change your name or split it into two products. Mm. Uh, and that's actually the moment that we, we said, okay, we're going to split it. Um, and then we found the lead camp name and, and developed the products further and, and build a mission and a vision for that 
as a standalone product. And, and do you still focus also on the say on the other business, or is it now purely focused on Lika? Yeah, we also have the other business, but it's more on an inbound model. Um, so we don't spend active selling time on it or, or a lot of development time. It's, it's a little bit in maintenance mode because it, it's active and it works. Um, and and yeah, it's 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 integratable with LeadCamp. So if you want more intelligence, you can connect it. Um, but yeah, today, for example, sometimes like like today, I get two emails of people like companies that say like, yeah, we want cards for for our team, uh, and then it's nice to have. Then of course we we supply them. Mm -hmm. no, that makes sense, of course. Are you the, um, because I mean, it's a, it's a pretty techy company. Are you the, the tech person behind the company or more the commercial? I wish. Um, <laughs> like my background, um, I, I have to go back to when I was 18, probably. Um, I was in um, an informatics course. So in my... Is that high school? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Uh, I was doing ICT and coding and that sort of stuff. Um, and then after that, I started working at Combell from Jonas Dynans, um for a couple of months. But then I said, like, no, this is not what I want to do all my life. Um, <laughs> then I decided to go to study economics. Uh, so then I got um, I, I was actually planning on doing a PhD in economics. And then I found my first startup. So I have a little bit of both. So I understand code, but I cannot write everything. Uh, and I understand, um, of course, the economic side of things. What I do code is everything from front end. I still do today as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Interesting because you you almost went for a PhD in economics. So I I think you do like the content though. You do like the material behind it, the intelligence. So how did you, you know, use that interest to then actually, you know, develop LeadCamp? Because I suppose you didn't just start at LeadCamp out of, you know, your own imagination. You did probably some research and, you know, based on everything. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So one of the things we did is talk to a lot of salespeople. So we talked to, I, I, I enjoy doing the research on things and, and understanding why things happen. So I wanted to understand how salespeople spend their days. Um, and surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, they spend their days a lot with stuff that isn't bringing that extra value to their, to their day to day. Like, um, I don't, it's almost like keeping yourself busy. I think everybody recognizes it. You think that you are doing stuff, you're false productive, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, so when, when I saw that and then combined with my interest for, like I'm, I'm really a geek when it comes to data and understanding stuff. Um, so yeah, I wanted to, to create something, some sort of statistical model or, or something that could across different people understand who is interested and who isn't. And in that way, of course, you can apply it to sellers, but you could apply it to, to every type of situation. Mm. Um, you could even find out if your mom is interested in buying you a cookie or whatever, um, based on, on what the person is doing. So the model itself is not related to sales in that sense. It's not related to specific industry. It just reads people. It understands people. And of course we have applied it to sales. Um, why did you choose sales? Because I suck at it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, didn't I, I didn't like doing sales myself and I always noticed that um, when I do an outreach when when I was doing it for Cardify for example I was doing an outreach and I tried to I, I had to fix myself like okay this is the moment you're going to do sales I send out a couple of emails you know how it goes and then two weeks later I was like oh yeah I've sent these emails two weeks ago I need to follow up with them and see what's happening with them um, mm -hmm. to solve that sort of situation, we basically, um, that was my vision. I want to help myself, um, to sell better. And that's now part of the core vision of what we want to achieve is make every low performer, high performer. Um, and what separates them is basically the basics. Sometimes you forget about follow-up. Sometimes you forget about who is doing what you, you miss those spots. You don't have the gut feeling. So that's where technology can assist. 
Yeah, and I think you also want to maximize customer facing time, right? Because I think that's that's something that you say. Sometimes I also feel very, very busy. But I, if I look at the end, my to-do list, you know, hasn't been really reduced of many. Uh, yeah. And then I'm just questioning myself, how did that come? But I think it's because of those things where, you know, you just, uh, you just kind of lose focus. And at the end, yeah, you're just, you know, scrabbling things behind your PC and that's kind of it. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about, you know, what kind of um, features did you really um, develop within Leadcamp and also why those? Yeah. So one of the first things that we wanted to do is, of course, build a model to understand interactions. Um, and at that time, people didn't understand, like, yeah, why would I need that? Um, it's a nice to have. Um, I see when they reply. Now, the thing is that if you look at the sales engagement landscape, a lot of these interactions or a lot of these platforms are driven by emails. Now, they forget everything else. So if you're using um, a workflow automation platform, it's like send an email, wait three days, send another email. Everything is targeted towards getting a reply. And what I wanted to achieve is, of course, I wanted to be able at some point to send out those emails as well, but I wanted to be based on what is the person on the other side thinking and doing. So we had to build that model first, uh, which is what we call today the heat score. And it takes in, in account um, different channels that your, your prospects engage with. And the model behind it is trained on about 14 million interactions globally. So every user, um, every user has its stake in what the score will be. So if in Taiwan today, someone is uh, is sharing the website and whatever their learnings coming out of that it can be used for someone in belgium because the model is globally trained okay. um and that distinguishes us from other players um while in the beginning it was a nice to have we are now seeing when everything starts coming together that people really understand like okay the power of intent versus your sequences is a game changer it can change your whole approach um you can literally build a sequence and say like, okay, if the person today is, I send my first email and you're opening it, you open it once, then oftentimes that means that you deleted the email. Just one open in a time span of three days, that means the email is gone. But if you open my email multiple times, that means I'm still in the inbox. So you opened it, you didn't delete it. You open it again, you didn't delete it. So based on that, only on the first email, what you can do with that intent there is you can split your sequence. If somebody deleted your email, you don't need to send a second one. You should go talk to them on LinkedIn, give them a call, change your approach. If somebody keeps you in your inbox, you can just follow up because that email is still there. Um, and that already changes the approach looking at just the first email and what, can, what it can mean to your sales approach, basically. So that is right now. We started with the heat score and then the, the foundation, but right now we're really pushing intent-based cadencing. Okay. Besides so very, cadencing. very interesting, very powerful example also, because what, what, are, what are other kind of intent signals that you see are, you know, something that people don't, don't think about? Yeah. So what a lot of salespeople miss today is the intelligence that marketing gets. There's a big gap between those two. So for example, if I, I, I do the test every time I'm doing outreach, for example, I'm checking out somebody's website. And even with some companies who are in, in major companies, you go to their website, you go to the resources tab and you download one of their white pagers. Now what I do, because I, I am the tech nerd, I right click and I inspect the element and I check what are they using to collect these leads. So oftentimes you see that people are using Marketo. Now Marketo costs a lot of money, but what happens after I download the white paper and I get redirected to a plain PDF, no tracking whatsoever on the PDF file. Now you see there, the person, I fill out that form. If I match the ICP and whatever that marketing decides, I'm gonna land with an SDR. The SDR mm -hmm. has a blind spot. He doesn't know anything. So that is, that is already where it changes things um, because we give all that intelligence from the ground up, um, starting with that PDF file to the sales rep 
and then they can build up the whole system. And based on that, that's also something that we see, of course, is you can automate everything that happened in there because you have that intelligence from day one. You don't have to go about calling the person, hey, what are you interested in? No, you know what they're interested in. You've seen it. Um, same with the website, like intent signals there is like, are they visiting my pricing page? Are they multiple times um, going over certain feature pages? That is all today to most sales reps is a blind spot. Um, but those signals you can use, even in your sequencing, you can use it. Can you, can you also, because I imagine if you had re, have reached out to, to someone in a certain company and they go to your website, you can probably track that through LeadCamp. But can you also track it if a colleague of that person is going on the website? Yeah, so basically the website, the tracker, it, it identifies devices. Um, so your device is different than somebody else's device. So it doesn't matter how to do that. Um, the thing is, from that moment, the other person is unknown to the system because we have your device, but not that of your colleagues. But from the moment there's an identification event, for example, um, there's an email or they join you in a meeting, then the device gets um, recognized. Um, okay. To say like that. And what are the new features you still need to make even a better um, like uh, software in your, in your yeah. eyes? Yeah, what we're adding right now is the ability to go full on on LinkedIn. So um, what a lot of cadencing tools do is they set you a task that you need to send a message on LinkedIn. Um, in our next version, that will be fully automated. So you can literally just add the LinkedIn message in your sequence and it will go out at the right time at the right to the right person. Uh, same with connections and, and following people and that sort of stuff. And then another thing that we're adding is managing your deals and opportunities. So you have a full scope. What is somebody worth to me? Um, and, and base the machine learning on the value of a, of a certain deal, for example. Um, and what we will also highlight is the buying signals. So, um, mm -hmm. so you don't need to dive in. You don't need to like the, the goal is that you never need to dive in. You can trust the score. Um, but of course the buying signals is something completely different. So these we will highlight as well. Powerful. You know, the, you have a lot of people that are kind of, um, you know, in, in, you have the two sides when it comes to automation, you have people that are passionate and, you know, they kind of do maybe a little too much of automation in some, in some spaces. And you have other people that say, no, I don't do automation because it sounds too robotic. I just want to be myself. It's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. So how do you try to balance this with uh, within LeadCamp? Lead yeah. One of the reasons why we called it cadencing um, and not just sequencing is because I feel sequencing is known as something you send out some emails and that's it. Um, for us, cadencing comes closer to workflows. So you can basically also use our feature to just streamline your process. You can use it to set tasks. You can use it to uh, assign people to certain pipeline stages. Uh, you can use it to assign prospects to someone else. Um, all that stuff you can do uh, using the cadencing. Now, even then you have a streamlined process. What if you don't have that process? We have something called automation rules to, to automate basically your low value tasks. And you will be insane or if you are in sales that you don't want to automate low value tasks um, <laughs> because then you have more time to spend on personalizing your emails, let's say it like that, um, and automate the rest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine that um, as a salesperson, you don't want to, you don't want to maybe put too much energy in a simple follow up email or anything like that. Exactly. Um, I mean, maybe I'm wrong when I'm saying that. Maybe other people think you should put a lot of personalization to the follow-up. I don't know. Um, but yeah, because that's that's what you kind of mean with the lower, um, the, the, the least important administrative task. If I can yeah, say like but that. it's also, for example, um, low-value tasks is like task setting on itself. So oh, yeah, okay, okay. If you had a meeting, a lot of people, they do as a set of tasks afterwards. You can automate that. Um, or if somebody says, reach back out to me in a couple months, people make a task for that. Now, what we have done is you put it in a certain pipeline stage called nurturing. 
And Leadcamp will tell you when a person comes back to your website or is showing engagement again, so you can immediately pick up your phone. And if they don't engage in the next three months, we will send you a reminder that it's maybe time to check them out again. Mm -hmm. That sort of stuff. If okay. you do that 10 and times, it's easy to, to cope with it. If you do that 100 times or 1,000 times, it becomes low value work that is taking up a whole lot of time. And is your tool mostly used like on its own or is it very integrated with other CRMs and other demand generation tools, for example? Yeah, so we, we integrate it with the CRM, of course, um, mostly for reporting. We have some reporting in our own tool, but managers like the CRM. Um, and uh, in the beginning, of course, we integrated with Outreach or Lemlist to, to have the cadencing, and we still do that. But now that we have it ourselves, we notice that teams are switching um, for that part to us. Um, so our main focus is CRMs and, and calling tools. So you can call from within the platform and that sort of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. And maybe some other intent drivers like... Yeah, you have calling platforms that do the analysis of your conversation. So you can we can use that analysis to implement it in our scoring, for example. Okay. From from your own experience, or, or maybe the experience from uh, from a couple of your clients, you know what what kind of sequence usually works well, if there is any. Yeah, I think I think there's one sequence, and I don't see it a lot of times. I see it with bigger American corporations. And it's starting to sink in here as well. Like we are focusing on the SMB market and, and we go a little bit more mid market as well. And in mid market, you see it happening, but then with the SMBs and startups, it's like something totally new, um, which is the approach of a low touch sequence, a blended one and a high touch one. Um, and I've built a matrix on it. I've shared the content on, on LinkedIn a couple of weeks ago. Um, like, where do you put your persona? Who do you put where? And basically, a lot of people, they, what they do, they do either of these sequences, but they don't realize they can be used together. Uh, and that is the power of it. So a low touch sequence, what you do there is you send basically three emails. And if the person is not engaging, you're going to pause it and you're going to redo that. I do that up to three times with a pause of four months in between. It's a series of different emails that I do. I keep it in automation. I just do a delay of three months. Uh, unless they start to engage. So I have a listener event on there that says, okay, if there's any email inter interaction triggered, let me know. Um, so within, within those three, four months between them. Then I do a series of three emails. It's just standard. There's uh, a value email that delivers value. There's a follow-up. And then there's a little bump and that sort of stuff. Now, what happens if the person really starts to engage to that? I move them to blend it. Um, so inside lead camp, I have a, a trigger that says, okay, if they start to engage, eject them from this journey and enroll them in another one. And the other one is a, is a blended sequence and it starts with a call. Um, and basically blended means my interactions are blended between calling, social, and email. Um, and that's when I start to, um, start to engage more with them. They start to engage more with the company. And, and basically you have calling, you have LinkedIn, you put a little bit more time in it. And then you have high touch. Now, high touch is a little bit separate, um, but these ones are for the key accounts. So where you really put personalization in, there are calls that's quite heavy on calling um, and on social touches. So you put more time in it, but of course your your number in there is much lower than the ones you put in high touch mm -hmm. and you move to blended. Yeah, with key accounts, you kind of should have more touches than, uh, yeah. than with other accounts, right? Kind of makes sense. And if you try something like this, do, the, do it in the same company with different people at the same time? Or is it one person you do this with? Um, you can enroll multiple people. Um, the thing is that, of course, if you automate it, the messaging will be the same for the two. And there have been occasions where, of course, people talk to each other. Um, and if they start to compare emails, uh, to me, it's not the nicest feeling. That's like, oh, yeah, I got that email as well. So you lose your I'm special effect. Um, so when I do that, I, I enroll multiple people on the moment that I notice that the first one is not engaging. Yeah, and another question I have for you is, how do you see the sales tech landscape evolve? Because I see many SaaS solutions, you know, that all integrate with each other, but you also have those few giant players. And I'm kind of interested to, to hear from you, from your point of view, how do you think this will evolve? Yeah, I think it largely depends on what the player is doing. 
Um, for example, if talking about CRM players in the market today, what you see with them is that they go very broad, but not very deep. Um, and if you really want to enable your sales team, I think you need to have a more in-depth system that can support them without bringing more work to them. Um, so our vision is, for example, with, with LeadCamp, is that it becomes a sales action platform. It's the first thing that you look at during your sales process, but it's not there to replace your CRM and it can be integrated with a calling tool. It just needs to enable it that it's fast in using. You don't need to use different platforms, like you work in one, but it synchronizes everything to other platforms where at the end, your team and your marketing team will always be using something different. Your manager and your deals and your quotes will always live somewhere in your CRM or wherever. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, I think there will always be different platforms um, because even if you're using Salesforce, you have different Salesforce sides of it. And yeah, I don't think... I don't think trying to put everything inside Salesforce helps you with limiting your clicks because Salesforce is a big a thing full of buttons. Uh, I think app switching between different tools is even faster than finding it in, in Salesforce. Uh, but they just need to be integrated, I feel. Okay. But you don't think that the big players would like to to kind of copy what LeadCamp is doing or maybe, you know, acquire LeadCamp eventually or anything like that? Yeah, I think that will be that will be something. It will be a sign that we're we're good at what we're doing, and that, that it's something that people uh, that people want. So at at one side, I would at one side I would like it. At the other side, um, we keep growing as well, and and we're trying to yeah make our mark and and see what we are capable of, and of course keep a close eye to what what is happening in the landscape and what competition is doing, uh, and that sort of stuff. Um, if someone wants to acquire um, it, I'm, I'm not gonna. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. <laughs> I think acquiring. Then we're already talking about the end of uh, like the, the extension, like the, the bigger idea. But I want to go back to the beginning, actually, of the, the lead camp. So you started at the beginning of the pandemic. How was it for you? The first sales of lead camp was it difficult? When did you start? Actually, decide to start selling lead camp? What kind of features were needed? Because that's often, I think, a difficult moment for uh, SaaS solutions. Yeah. So in in the beginning, when we were, so we've been developing it for a couple of months, um, close to a year, I think, and then we decided, like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna go to market with what we have, um, and that was a hard one um, because we were building a nice to have at the time. Uh, people basically they said like, oh, I see the score is nice and can analyze everything. Oh, I like that, and it seems to be. It seems to be a good score. It seems to be relevant. It seems to pick up everything that I needed to pick up, but I'm not going to buy um, because, yeah, I need to integrate it with my HubSpot. I need to, I need my sequences. Uh, I can't track everything that I want. Um, so then you hit that roadblock and you're like, all right, this is not going well. We don't have the product market fit we were hoping for. Um, so we, we cut that out. We stopped doing sales. We started to develop and listen more to what we have. So of course we had customers in, in about a hundred countries and um, they were using things of it. They were using the automation rules. We, they were automating stuff that we couldn't even believe they were automating. Like one night there was someone in Taiwan who was sending out 5,000 emails through an automation rule, which was, it wasn't built for that. Um, but that was like, all right, so people do want to send automated emails. Um, so then we started to evolve the, the vision of like, okay, we can leverage the scoring and what can we do with it? Um, and right now we're basically at the moment where we start to feel that sales conversations go much smoother. We don't have this thing anymore where people say, I don't need this and I don't see the value of it. We, we are now at the time that we can do demos and close a deal in the, in the same meeting. Um, so that's a whole different situation. So right now we're hiring on sales again and we are, we're going back to market. Let's go. <laughs> kind of the scale up wave. Yeah. <laughs> when you say that someone in Thailand sent 5,000 email, didn't you like think, oh, maybe I should say something that this is not probably the way that we should use lead camp or that they should approach sales? Yeah, the thing is that one customer, what they did is, of course, in Taiwan, they, they have, we have the hour difference. 
or the couple hour difference. Um, so we only noticed it in the morning uh, that a certain service of our of our server was down. Um, so we got emails from um, from our server company from our hosting company that said like what's happening on your server um and that's when we looked into it and that's when we saw like what's happening now the client itself he was playing with these automation rules um and and he didn't realize that 5,000 emails were going out because somebody new on the team made an email account on the platform set a rule up to send an email and activated it. And what it did, it, it went back over to all their leads and sent everyone an email. Um, so they tried everything. They, they, they removed the account of her, but like damage was done, the emails were out. Um, so then we kindly advised like, this is a super powerful feature, but don't give it to someone that doesn't know the platform yeah. because that could cause quite some damage as well. <laughs> Did you then try to do it differently there? Because I can imagine that, I mean, could that situation reproduce itself somewhere else in, in, in the world? Or did you try yeah. to systemize it so that you, the situation blocks in a certain way? Yeah, the thing is, right now, there was a moment when we didn't have queuing um, and that sort of stuff. So right now, it wouldn't happen again. Like, the emails would still go out, but we could interrupt it. Right. Um, when, when somebody, of course, you need to flag us. I did something wrong. Can you stop everything that's happening? Um, but of course, if you, if you use an automation rule to send an email to someone and, and you don't watch out what your trigger is, then you could you could do the same thing um of course we have had multiple checks in there now that ask you okay are you sure you want to put it live of course if you click yes 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 then we can't do more than yeah, that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course no makes sense no funny story now uh, another thing you know that i see uh, or i think should be an opportunity because what lead camp does is mostly see what's the behavior behind someone um, you know, what do they look into? What are they interested? And there you have those intense signals. But are you also, or maybe planning also to look into what people actually say in the email, in the phone calls, really the content, the semantic behind it? Yeah. yeah. Um, semantic analysis, Google does a lot of terrific work on semantic analysis uh, and building these APIs that you can basically for for a few cents you can use their apis and so up until a couple of weeks months ago they had one and it gave you some word loading it wasn't super powerful you still need to develop a lot of it uh, but recently we got access to a new api that they are using or that they are developing which is much better than the previous one and doesn't it is less it, it requires less input um so yeah, we're playing with that and, and the results look promising to say that. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Because I can imagine that then you can also see what accounts or what prospects are really enthusiastic about your offering and will even help you further with the, uh, the yeah, priority so the management. Goal is, uh, a part of lead camp is the guided selling aspect. So the goal is basically that we can tell your reps, which content they should send which website pages they should send to a certain person based on that person's intent, their their persona, uh, the company that they work for, um, and, and match all those dots together, basically. Interesting, man. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> and do you, do you feel that you also have to be an expert like in, in that field now? Because you said, like, I post my matrix on LinkedIn three weeks ago. Is it something you want to do more and more with the cadences? Yeah, um, because what what I notice is sometimes I go into a demo call and people ask me because I see a lot of sales processes, I see a lot of stuff and I can automate everything. Uh, people ask me like, can you take a look at what I'm doing and how I could improve it? Um, and people also often ask like, yeah, for example, the example that I gave with the first email and the amount of opens, it's like, yeah, that's, that's a new way of looking at it. Um, you should share more of these practices, these examples. So... Yeah, that you, you, it's a whole different way of looking at your sequence. So in that sense, um, I want to create more content related to it and, and do more on the, the personal brand side of things, to say it like that, um, to really inspire these, these people that, um, that the way of modern selling has arrived. 
Um, and then it's something totally different than waiting three days between your emails. Yeah, definitely. And I imagine because you have also all that data, you can also really do, I mean, the, the research and, and create kind of guidelines on that more than selling. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's one of the goals you see a lot with, for example, with Gong, they share a lot of best practices that they have seen in the user base. Uh, that's something that we're working on. Of course, the data is being gathered, um, but there's so much data um, that I simply, if I need to do it, I, it wouldn't be in the next couple months. So <laughs> it's it's one of the things that we're looking at, like, okay, we soon we're going to hire a data scientist. And I was going to ask, yeah. Yeah, they can signal these these things while they're busy <laughs> with the algorithms and that sort of stuff. Yeah, I graduated um, business engineering, but with a specialization in, in data science. So when I hear a situation like that, where you have too much data, but you just know you can get interesting insight out of it, I, yeah. I just get enthusiastic. So <laughs> I would definitely say talk to a data scientist uh, and, then, and then you'll get your content right away. Yeah, indeed. I think so as well. There's so much in there. I, I don't even. I don't even want to see what what the output is. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, what's what's for you the the big ambition with uh, with Leadcamp? I mean, you kind of revealed some elements already, but you know, just be you know, what's what's your bold vision, your bold ambition uh, with Leadcamp? Yeah, I think I, I want to be able to touch multiple hundred thousand people um, and making them top performers by leveraging technology and and artificial intelligence that can assist them in becoming the best they can be uh, that is like my my vision now to do that of course we're still a small team so we need to we need to grow that and i think at some point i really want to do the acquisition strategy where for example a calling tool we can we can bring that in and don't have to build that ourselves so to gain more momentum and speed um, and maybe the same with, with some other technologies that are out there and being built um, on certain principles and, and whatever to not only grow in terms of customers, but also to become the platform in Europe um, if you have a sales team that is getting stuck at what they're doing or you feel like they're spending too much time on the necessary bullshit. Um, <laughs> There's only one thing you need to do and it's bringing this technology. <laughs> awesome, man. So tell, tell us, where can people find you if they want to find more, find out more about, uh, about Leadcamp? So yeah, Leadcamp uh, on leadcamp.io, of course. Um, and you can find me um, yeah, on LinkedIn. Um, I am the strange guy with a QR code on a profile picture. <laughs> yeah, I've uh, noticed that <laughs> for the podcast, right? Maybe yeah. you can say also something about that. Yeah, yeah, first sound of sales. So um, it's also part of the vision, what, what we said earlier, trying to inspire people. Uh, because I talked with so many people, I noticed that there's a lot of people that are scared in sales or are unsure what to do, how to tackle stuff. So I didn't want to create a podcast that is just about tactics and, and the tools that you're using. But I wanted to also share, like, how did you get where you are? What were your hardest moments in there? What were your best moments in there to really bring personal stories and inspire the, the future leaders that are out there? Love it. So that's Sound of Sales. If they want to find out more about Sound of Sales, where do they go? Soundofsales.co. Co. I don't know how to pronounce that oh. nicely, but it's not .com. It's com without the M. <laughs> yeah, and if you say go, I, I don't think it will. <laughs> All right. I think Martin has a last question then for you. Yes, yes, this is a question we ask everybody. So if Bram van der Velde were to be a brand, where would it stand for? Give it all, never back down is my thing. Um, so if I were a brand, I would I would want to have people, yeah, to bring them the vision of, yeah, push through whatever happens, it will all land on the Never back down. All right. I like that, man. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Brian, for being on the show. And I wish you a lot of a uh, lot of good luck, man. Thank you very much for inviting me. A lot of fun. I like uh, I like <laughs> the atmosphere of the three of you. Hey, of us now. Always. <laughs> <laughs>